believe it or not, I am back down here at Rancam Bee Ranch. We have a little bit more honey to extract today. Yesterday, a new friend of mine, Jared, from right here in Hartford, he's looking into getting into bees. He helped me pull 52 more boxes of honey uh, up at the cell tower bee yard, and they're in here to be extracted. This will be the rest of my honey harvest for the year. But we have really worked this honey house out this year. It's been a record harvest, I believe, for both Rusty and me. And we've gotten a lot of experience with our new equipment, our new setup. But today is not gonna be so much about the extraction process as it, as it is. We're gonna kinda of talk about the, one of the stars of the show, and that is our new Hilco Mega Max extractors. Maybe show you some tips and tricks that we've learned while using these extractors, and also do a really honest review as far as how they've worked out for us. All right, there's Rusty with one of our Hilco Mega Max extractors. I thought we'd talk just a minute about some of the things we've discovered with these extractors as we've been using them. What is your opinion after running over 300 boxes worth of frames through these extractors yeah, so far? A bu bunch of frames through it so far. Um, I would say that John at Hillco has knocked this thing out of the park. Um, we've had Maxant, we've had Lyson, we've had a couple other different uh, uh, manufacturers, extractors. Bruce and I both started with the hand crank, so we've kind of walked our way up through everything. Um, and so far, beyond a shadow of a doubt, this is the best extractor we've had. High quality stainless steel, a lot of thought went into the design, um, especially it, with, with regards to how we're gonna get the honey out of it. Good slope from front to back. Drains better than any extractor um, that we've utilized. You do at the end have to scrape out a little bit of honey, but you don't have to tilt it um, if you don't want to. Top motor assembly. We've had some with top motor assemblies, bottom motor assemblies, I've gotta tell you, I like this design better than the bottom motor assembly, especially at the end. It's a little messy um, when we're extracting, loading frames, but at the end when it com comes time for cleanup, two wing nuts basically, nice padded knobs in this case on carriage bolts, take those off, this whole top assembly comes off, motor, inverter, controller, the whole nine yards, basket comes out, um, so it's fantastic. Programmable, we're kind of still working through uh, what we want our program to look like. So for now, we're just running it in a manual mode. We just simply use the, the knob there to adjust the speed. Um, based on load weight, we're still kind of working on how many different settings we like to walk it through, generally starting out somewhere around 100, easing our way up to 200, and then up to about 280 RPM. It'll run 345 uh, RPM. Um, that's a little fast. The biggest thing that we found last week is you gotta get that first major load off, load yeah, off yeah. of it, and then you can ramp it up fairly quickly. F five to seven minutes at somewhere around 100, no more than 120, um, and you've thrown off 50 plus percent of the weight. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, and then we're not making the motor struggle so hard, although this is a real high quality motor gearbox. It's not something <laughs> that I'm really worried about anyway. Yeah, the first yeah. week we had some issues. We were trying to, I think, ramp it up too fast maybe, and the motors got pretty hot. But last week we, we were a little slower about ramping them up and the motors barely even got warm. I mean, they weren't hot at all. One thing we didn't do, and, and if you watch the unboxing video, it's just not like us to read instructions. We're going, we're going to go full tilt. Out of the shipping container, all of this was pre-assembled. We fired it up, ran that first day of extraction. Probably would have been wiser, because once we got this assembly set on top, just loosen these knobs a little bit so it's not bolted super uh, tightly down. Then turn it on, let it spin, and it will kind of self-balance itself. It will get that center shaft um, nice and aligned, and then you can tighten these back down. We did that, the subsequent um, extractions we've done with it, um, and she's run like a champ since then. We'll, we'll give you more information as we go, but John ha has really killed it with this thing. We couldn't be any happier. I love it much more than my Maxant, much more than my Lyson. For this price point, this is premier. I don't think you're gonna get any better uh, of an extractor in this price range. I mean, if you wanna go full-scale production line, that's something completely different, but for the sideliner <clears throat> at our scale, you're not gonna beat this, no way. Awesome, man. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get this thing rocking and rolling, and then afterwards we'll take it apart and kind of show you how easy that is to clean it up and then do a, a final summary on our uh, Hilco Mega Max extractor review. Let's get with it. Okay, brief introduction of our crew. Here's Felicia. We got Jeff over here. Say hey, Jeff. 
Got a net. <laughs> we got Jesse over here. Of course, Rusty's back here operating the machine. So things are flowing pretty smooth so far. We're making a dent in the stack already. We got this one set at the first setting around 100. It's actually 106 right now. You see it spinning. We got honey coming out. We found that if we do it at a fairly slow speed to start it, the machines tend to tolerate the load a lot better. And then this one over here, I'll go ahead and wrap it up to about, take it up to about 150 probably, 160. And now that'll take it to the next level. We'll probably go 160 or so, then about 200, 210, then I'll be 280. Now this one over here was actually rocking a little bit earlier. It's off balance a little bit, but Rusty just tightened down the leg where it's bolted in there, and it made a huge difference. Now it's not bucking as much, and it's doing a lot better. We got Lynn here. Hey, Lynn, so, yeah, he decided to come and help out. He helped us uh, pull the other day, so thanks for coming, Lynn. Yeah, no problem, We're rocking and rolling. We're approaching halfway through already, and it's only 941, so we're doing great. I will say that on this extractor over here, it was it wouldn't go up to speed a while ago, and the, I'm pretty sure the reason was that one of the frames had come out of place, and then one of them had not been uh, uncapped quite good enough, and so we rectified that situation, went right up to speed and very, very quickly uh, extracted the rest of the honey out. So you just gotta make sure all the frames are in balance. If the extractor won't go up to speed, stop it, check your frames, make sure they're all in place and then turn it back on. Jesse's become a pro here at, at loading the extractor. You gotta just get it locked in there just right. See at the bottom and then you push it back in the top and the bottom, it locks right into place. Once you get in the groove, it's really quite easy. It just takes a little practice. Isn't that right, Jesse? This is the very end. That's a wrap for twenty. Last frame. Twenty-four. Last frame of our honey harvest for the year. We got our last two spins going in the extractors, except for these last two frames. Uh, Liz putting the last frame in there. We're going to run it with two frames directly across from each other. And we are basically, that's the last frame loaded up. Okay, we got it at 281 right now. See, it's going so fast, it's got like waves going on the sides. We'll wrap it on up and we'll show you how fast it is at over 300. Might as well. 
just for fun. 325 now. Really no reason to ever go. We found over 280 to 300, at least in our opinion. Spins only out just fine. Pretty dry. Good luck. Ready to go, I think. Man, they worked like a champ today. As long as you keep the weight distributed properly and don't ramp them up too fast, the motor's not even really hot. Rusty, what do you think, man? No, it, it's a beast. Like I said earlier, John really went above and beyond in engineering this thing. Of all the extractors we've had, no doubt this is the best one. Works like a champ. Easy to load kind of once you figure it out. Easy to clean out. We're gonna walk you through that process here. Absolutely necessary. Uh, emergency stop, right? So you just hit that to stop it. And uh, the, the tilt in the bottom also allows it to drain out. The honey's pretty thick, so it's draining out pretty slowly, but man, that keeps the honey out of the frames as it's spinning. It works really well, and if we let it set a while, it just all drains out the front. There's no more tilting right. necessary, so that yeah, works We're, we're well. gonna show you a way to expedite that a little bit here as we break it down, um, but it will completely drain without unbolting it from the floor or tilting it. Um, if you give it time to do so. Um, but we're, we're tired, even though, well, we've done 52 boxes in three and a half hours. Yeah. Fantastic crew today helping us out. Um, but we're so, gonna unbolt it and, and go ahead and get this honey out of so, it. So total yeah. frames run through these two extractors. Let's see, we did 200 with mine. So there's 114 2, last week. So there's, let's call it 1200, so we're at 3600. And then today we have 52 more boxes. So really we're looking at, I don't know, whatever it was, it was a lot. We gave these things a really good test. One to 10, what would you rate this thing probably? Overall functionality. A solid nine and it's, it's paining me to not give it a 10. The only issues we had were self-induced mostly, right? As we're learning um, how the, uh, the controller works here, the inverter works and how to program that. Those, those were self-induced issues. Yeah, I'd, I'd rate it on their eight or nine as well. It's just hard to give anything a 10. I don't know how to do that, but it's about as high as we can go. Um, especially when you consider the price, the cost of these things. Yeah. I mean, 2,400 bucks, man. The price point for this, this scale of operation, if you're, if you're wanting to scale to this size, just take a little bit longer, pinch your pennies a little bit tighter and spend, drop 2,400 bucks on this because this machine is, is well worth more than $2,400. I think so, and it's, that's the price to your door. I mean, that includes yeah. shipping, so that's not just the price of the extractor. Now I want to show you real quickly how we break it down. Quick breakdown, I think Richard talked about this a little bit in the he last did. video. Just like he said, make sure you unplug it. I mean, that, that goes without saying. Um, two rubber-coated knobs here on each end. Again, high quality, uh, no detail overlooked by John. We just break these loose. They're on basically a carriage bolt system. Keep up with them. There is a washer under the knob. Boom. That is the extent of parts removal There's that to get this motor assembly off. See, I've already <laughs> tried to lose a washer. <laughs> top mounted motor assembly inverter. Uh, all sitting on top of your, your carriage basket shaft. Um, it's just got a slotted coupling that drops down over a shear pin here, right? So we're gonna lift it off straight up. Boom, it's, we're off the carriage assembly. Now, set this out of the way, easily wiped down, wet rag, it's stainless steel, cleans up really easy. We'll get this put out of the way here in a bit. So now really all we've got is the extractor tank itself and the carriage assembly. The carriage assembly is sitting on top of one large ball bearing at the bottom of the shaft. So as we lift it out, boom, done. So, so easy, gosh. So you can easy. wash it out. You can set it outside, let the bees rob it out. Richard uses a uh, shower squeegee. I think this is a Pampered Chef dough knife. These things come in handy for so many different reasons in the honey house. But we can just run right around the edge here to kind of expedite the cleanup and drain in here. Let's see what the tilt of tank is already, the honey is mostly yeah. drained out. Yeah. It's mostly already down we here. Can, yes, we can see it still moving again. If we just wanted to let it sit here, it would drain itself completely. But there's a solid inch to half inch difference in height from the back edge oh, to yeah. the honey gate edge. You, can see, see it in, you narrow... can see it in that lower band. Yeah. It's just enough to take care of the job without just, just 
flowing out like having crazy. to tilt it, right? Yep. So now perfect. I can just take this dough knife, kind of shove it right on around. This is just the tank of the extractor, so yeah, it's it, so it, easy to move. It's not real heavy now because the basket and the motor are off of there. And it's what, 340, 304 stainless steel. It's super high quality, but once the motor's off, once the basket's out, I can easily pick this up uh, and carry it weight-wise myself. It's all we're trying to do with one person. But, but it's this, just, this, the remaining part now is super light, easy to handle. Yep. Yeah, look and at I'm, this ball bearing real quick, just oh, yeah. so people are aware of it. So you do, it's a fairly large ball bearing that sits in here. If you do choose to power wash it, make sure you don't blow that out and then end up losing it. And then it does have a grease circle on the bottom to re-grease it once you assemble with uh, food grade silicon grease. You can get a hold of Bruce, you can get a hold of me if you've got any questions. Or what's really cool is you can call John at Hillco and you can talk to the man himself. He is, customer service is fantastic. And you're not gonna do any better with, with a, a uh, extractor either. I, just, I don't see a better one on the market today in this price point. All right guys, well, what do y'all think? I appreciate y'all coming. Some of our crew has dispersed and not everyone's in the video here, but we appreciate your help guys. And uh, we get return performance. That, that's saying something. Yeah, I know. I don't <laughs> know how I keep talking once, into you don't it. Come back. That's a wrap guys. We appreciate y'all's help. And uh, I guess we'll sign up for now and we'll catch you next time. Keep on keeping on.